You are 100% guaranteed to fail financially if you do this one thing. Watch this video so that we can help you save your financial prosperity. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. For the best infinite banking and financial advice, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notifications bell so that you're notified when we upload new videos. Did you know financial turmoil is a leading cause in divorce, depression, and suicide? But for some reason, money is a topic that we refuse to talk about. By the end of this video, you will have all the information you need to drastically increase your financial livelihood. Money is a necessity for our survival. Think about it. We trade money for everything, for the clothes on our back, the food that we eat, the houses that we live in, and in fact, the device you're watching us on right now. But why weren't we taught about money in school? I mean, we took finance classes, mm -hmm. but let's be real. The finance teacher probably wasn't a professional within the finance industry. And in fact, Robert Kiyosaki calls these individuals fake teachers. So it's unfortunate that the main thing that we need to survive was never taught to us to begin with. And don't take our word for it, here are the facts. 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and over half of the American households have no money in savings or a plan for retirement. So those numbers speak for themselves. Americans do not have the education that they need to be successful financially. And here's one reason why. As a society, we are not financially literate. The money that you're paid, that we're paid, is not kept in an environment that can keep up with inflation because all of our money that we're paid, we put it into the bank. The inflation rate for 2018 was 2.5%. Now remember, our money sitting in, in the bank does not keep up with inflation. Let's take the largest bank in the United States, for example. This is JP Morgan Chase Bank. They have over $2.62 trillion in assets. Let's say you have a basic savings account with Chase Bank. They're paying you 0.01% just to have that savings account with them. Or you can have a premium savings account with Chase Bank and you have less than $50,000. They'll pay you a whopping 0.04%. And for the big ballers out there who have $50,000 or more, they'll pay you 0.07%. So let's do a quick exercise to help this make more sense. Remember back in the day when your parents said that I can go to the candy store and buy the Snickers bar for 10 cents. Now you look on the rack and it's $1.25. That's inflation. We'll use the Snickers bar as an example. Let's say you go to CVS today and your Snicker bar costs you $1.25. Now let's remember, inflation is at 2.5%. So this time next year, that same Snicker bar that costs you $1.25 will cost you $1.28. Now we know how the Snickers bar was affected with inflation just in one year. Let's now compare your savings account to see if you were able to keep up with inflation. So let's take the same $1.25. This time next year, if you are paid out 0.01%, the bank will pay you 0.00013 in interest. That makes your new balance 1.25013, which means you do not have enough money to buy that Snickers bar. Now let's up the ante. Let's say that you are a Premier Chase account holder. That same $1.25 at 0.04% will pay you 0.0005 in interest, which increases your balance to 1.2505, which again, still doesn't allow you to pay for that Snickers bar in one year. Now for the big ballers out there, like Darius said, we take the same $1.25 and the bank is paying you 0.07%. And they're paying you 0.00088 in interest, which increases your balance to 1.25088. Again, you still cannot afford the Snickers bar. None of these accounts will pay you enough interest to keep up with inflation to buy a Snickers bar. So with any of these accounts at Chase Bank, just as this example, you cannot afford the Snickers bar and you lost money. And don't take our word for it, do the math yourself. And in fact, comment below with I'll buy it if we create t-shirts that say do the math. I mean, seriously, people need to be woke to the financial world. 
because every single year you keep your money in a savings account, you are losing over 2%. And you can't afford to do that when you're already behind inflation. Mm -hmm. Here's another example for you, and this is dedicated to my big ballers out there who have Premier accounts with Chase Bank. Let's say you have $100,000 in your Premier savings account with Chase and you haven't touched it for one year, you're earning the big 0.07% on this savings account. At the end of the year, you have $100,070. <laughs> but the key thing that Darius just said, I don't know if you guys caught it, is he said, if you keep the money in the bank, because these interest rates that we're talking about are compounded interest rates, but if you touch the money, you start the process all over again. So there goes your $70. So again, the key thing to remember here that Darius said is you have to keep that money in the bank in order to get the interest that mm -hmm. the bank is paying you. And not only do you have to keep your money in the bank, you're still $2,430 behind inflation in order to stay on pace. Now let's be real. This is exactly why rich people don't keep all their money in the bank. And many of you watching this video right now know that you're getting crappy interest rates at the bank, but you're not doing anything about it. So we hope that this information that we're sharing with you today on this video will wake you up and realize that you need to get on the bandwagon and start earning some more money elsewhere. So now that you know this information, you may be asking yourself, how do the banks actually work? And we'll break this down for you. So the banks take our deposits and lend our deposits back out to people who need loans. And they charge a higher interest rate, which is how they make their money. So they're charging us anywhere from four to 26% and they're paying us the pennies to hold our money with them. And the big ballers are earning 0.07%. Wow. And then when we need money to finance our lifestyle, they're charging us interest to use our own money. Cause it's the money that we deposit in the bank to begin with. But wait, there's more. There's this thing called fractional reserve banking where the banks are able to turn your $1 into $10. So they're able to, out of thin air, create money. And like Darius said, that $1 that you deposited into the bank now multiplies into 10 for the banks to just lend money over and over and over again because they've multiplied your money. So when you go to log in to your online banking, the money that you see really isn't there, it's digital money. Because when's the last time that you've gone to the bank and they gave you a bag of cash for your personal loans? Not no. We've even went to the bank and asked for $5,000 in cash and they told us that we had to wait a day because they have to order it. So that goes to tell you that they don't have the cash on hand. So that's why the banks can have trillions of dollars in assets and pay you next to nothing for holding on to your funds. But don't worry, there is a bank on every corner to make it super convenient for you to stay behind inflation and line their pockets. You guys remember, we are only talking about banking, folks. We're not talking about investing. Therefore, we need to find an environment where we can park our deposits to keep up with inflation. And where might that be, Darius? Well, there's this thing called whole life insurance where you can earn a guaranteed 4% compounding interest rate in order for you to keep up with inflation. Now, I love the fact that you said we're only talking about banking because so many people confuse banking with investing. And when we talk about banking, we're only talking about the place where you park your money so that you can earn interest. Mm -hmm. And then you take that money and invest it. So at the bare foundation, you need to make sure all of your deposits are in an environment that's keeping up with inflation. And the only place that we know from a banking standpoint where you can park your money is a whole life insurance policy that pays dividends. Mm -hmm. From a mutual insurance company. So you really need to make sure that you do your due diligence to make sure that your hard earned money that you're working for every single day is working for you. And that's why we totally recommend that you put your money inside a whole life insurance policy designed with high cash value so that you can access your money and keep it working for you, earn the guaranteed 4% and still be able to invest, which will allow you to generate even more interest back into your own banking system. And again, don't take our word for it. Where do you think the banks put all their savings or all the extra funds that they get? The banks are the largest purchasers of whole life insurance. And remember, JP Morgan Chase Bank that you big ballers have 
your premium savings account with earning a 0.07% interest, they have close to $10 billion just in cash value of whole life insurance. And when we say cash value, we mean liquid capital that they have on hand that they can access that's growing the guaranteed 4%. And you see Wells Fargo has over $19.3 billion in cash value. And look at Bank of America. They have $18.5 billion in cash value. And Citibank has over $4.5 billion. Now this is something you should not ignore. Why in the world are the banks buying whole life insurance, but as consumers, we're taught to buy term insurance and invest the difference? Now we've only mentioned the banks. Did you know that one fifth of Fortune 500 companies have whole life insurance policies that they use to fund their businesses and pay their executives? So what does that mean? That means we should be buying whole life insurance the same way that they're buying it, right? Exactly. So remember folks, this decision is totally yours. You can decide to keep your money inside the bank and be behind inflation, or you can do something about it and be in front of inflation and make more money just by putting your money in a different environment. Or just putting your money where the banks put their money. It's that simple. So now that you know this information, what exactly are you gonna do about it? You can't unlearn it. This is the basic foundational principles that you need to know in order to increase your financial literacy. And this is what separates the rich from the broke. So now that you know how you were guaranteed to fail financially, let us help you change the game. We have created an online course called The Money Blueprint. And in The Money Blueprint, we discuss how you can obtain a millionaire mindset, manage your money, how the banks make money, and how they operate debt. In addition to that, we teach you how to become your own source of financing through the infinite banking concept so that you can fire the banks and keep all of that principal and interest that you're paying the banks for yourself. And because you took the time to watch this video and spend time with us, we are actually going to gift you the very first module of the Money Blueprint course. So go ahead and hit the link below after this video so that you can get access to the first module. Also, if you want to join a community of like-minded high achievers just like yourself, we have a Patreon community that we teach you everything you need to know about infinite banking and how to apply it so that you can navigate this sometime tricky space. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and share this information with your family and friends so they can get ahead financially too. And if you're new to the Wealth Nation channel, we have a slogan that we like to say, which is own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.